Good day everyone, it's James. I'm here today to talk to you about a deck I have built in light of the old border shift that's happening with the new Time Spiral Remastered. Well, new. The old Time Spiral Remastered? You know the one I mean. Now in the past I've actually built, before when playing with my playgroup, a old border only hazards on deck. I have played that deck quite a lot and I brought some of that learning to this one of what cards I found worked really well that crossover. They're obviously Given that the deck today I'm building is an old border Talran deck, which is mono blue, and Hazazon was a Naya deck, uh, the overlapping cards may be small. I've kept this deck at under $90 US because you shouldn't need money to enjoy a unique aesthetic. It, there will be cards though because of that that you would probably think should go in. You could do those changes yourself. So with that said, let's just quickly talk through the deck. I'm going to start with just going for the commander and then the general game plan. So Talran pretty well-known commander. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you create a 2-2 drake with flying. Now, a 2-2 drake with flying is actually not bad by all border standards, so Talrand being downshifted, uh, border shifted, allows you to run a old border spell slinger mono blue deck, where you probably have better creatures than most other mono blue or border only decks. So that's a fun side effect of the error of magic you're playing in for the most part by these time shifts. The general game plan of the deck is a lot like a lot of Tauron decks. You are going to play Tauron, you're going to keep mana up, you're going to counter threats to your board stay as you develop it, you're going to cast draw spells to refill your hand, and then you're going to slowly beat people to death with a bunch of flying tutus. That part of the strategy is not that different from a normal Tauron deck because, well, it works. Let's talk through some of the parts though. Your counter spells are going to look quite different. Some of them will be good old recognized ones like Counterspell uh, or Exclude, but you're also going to be running some interesting ones. You'll be running cards like Confound. You will be running Counterspells like Interdict. Just because you need that density of ways to interact, especially because in your old border, when a blue, it's much harder for you to interact with the board. You don't have Cyclonic Rift. So you can see there's a whole bunch of them here, but it's a Tower on deck, you're just running a bunch of Counterspells. I won't go through each and every single one of them. But those are just some of the important ones. I'm also running Foil because it's a free counter spell. This seems also quite important to me that the Tauron deck needs to be able to play the commander and be able to protect it immediately without going shields down. And obviously we can't afford Force of Will because we're not made of money. What do we do if something gets on the board? Well, we have a couple cards that will help us deal with threats on the board if our counter spells have failed to stop them getting there. We have Capsize to put it back in their hand to buy back. We have Control Magic, Confiscate, most critically, to me at least, Helm of Possession. Now, Helm of Possession is a really strong card on Old Border. I use it a lot of my Hazards on deck and it always overperforms. Just the threat of it on the board will change how your opponents play. They do not want to put big scary creatures on the board that you could just take. They may not even want to, if they don't have a way to answer Helm of Possession, they may not want to play the Commanders. It's a really powerful card. It does sit on the board, which means it's they, they will generally see it coming, but it's a really powerful threat and you just turn one of your two shoes into one of the best creature on the board whenever you need to forever it's great now like any good theme deck you need as much draw as possible because obviously you've artificially limited the power of your individual cards because you're building to some kind of aesthetic theme or narrative theme or whatever but you've built to a theme so you need to refill your hand more because each of your cards individually probably does less and in a tower and deck your cards definitely individually do less especially in old border so with that, I have shoved in every piece of draw I could find, the old border shifted treasure cruise, obviously deep analysis, concentrate, opportunity, just these old border cards that just draw you more than one card to refill your hand as much as you can. You also are running a bunch of cantrips. These are just because, remember, every spell you cast in the stack also secretly reads if Taran's on the field, make a 2-2. So all these one mana draw card spells are one mana, make a 2-2, draw a card and this gives you helps you build your board presence which lets you kill people protect yourself you know the whole, the whole usual deal so we've got stuff like opt we've got brainstorm we have portent we have peak the list goes on now for board wise we're quite limited we don't have cyclonic rift we don't have rivers rebuke we don't have these ways budget or not to sh shove everything back into our opponent's hands so we are having to run stuff like Washout, which will return all permanents of the color of your choice to those owners, their owner's hands, which can be quite powerful and good and help you get in the final kill swing while maintaining your board. We are also running Nevin Rolls Disc, just because it will do the job, but we are quite limited. Our next option after those two is Distorting Wake, 
Distorting Wake is obviously not as good as River's Rebuke or similar, but it's it's all border, it's a cost of the aesthetic, you gotta make do with what you've got. Speaking of making do with what you've got, let's talk about the ramp. Because I'm also trying to maintain a budget here, I've had to make some really interesting choices with the ramp. If you have extra budget, the first thing I would say you want to do is try and improve the Mana Bay. You've got the ones you'd expect. Felwar Stone, Mine Stone, Star Compass, Sky Diamond. You can't afford an old border soul ring if you want to keep it to budget, so that's one of the first things I would add if you have the if you have an old border soul ring lying around. Other cards we put in there, we put in Warm Power Stone. Okay, you recognize that one. You probably recognize Hedron Archive. You probably recognize Basalt Monolith. Okay, so you got those three. Where is the last few slots though? The last few slots is where it starts getting really clunky. You're gonna have to run stuff like Mana Prism, Sisse's Ring, and Soul Grail. Not Soul Ring, Soul Grail. Soul Ring's less successful cousin. Now, the ramp will work, it will do the job, but yeah, I, I'm not gonna pretend the ramp is anywhere near as good as it would be in another deck. So just please keep that in mind. The first thing I would do if you have the money is look for ways to improve the ramp situation. The cards like Soul Ring. That's, that's the broad structure of the deck. You've now got the broad structure. A lot of counter spells, a lot of draw, a lot of cantrips. Some interesting choices of ramp, limited board wipes. But there is some also some spice. Some, not, not, maybe not spice, more like pet cards, my favorite cards. Like little cards I like to play with and I like to throw in some of my decks. You may note that this deck has only one creature and it's Cognivore. And that's just because I thought it's kind of funny that I can put in Polymorph, Polymorph one of the two twos and bring out this big giant beater. Important to note with Cognivore, its power toughness is equal to the number of all instant cards in all graveyards, not just your graveyard. So it's often going to be pretty big. So I thought that's a fun card. Day of the Dragons, it's a cool card. Coat of Arms is probably better if you've got the budget for it. In fact, Coat of Arms is definitely better if you've got the budget for it, but I don't have the budget for Coat of Arms, so Day of Dragons gets in, and I get to make all my drakes grow up into big, grown up dragons that are going to go to work and beat the ever loving crap out of your opponents. The Mirari. The Mirari is a cool, flavorful card. I got South Magic around Onslaught Odyssey, so the Mirari has a bit of nostalgia value to me. I'm not going to claim it's the world's best card. Uh, you could probably change that from a Phyrexian Processor and have a much better deck as a result, but it's in there because I like the card and it's cool and I want to find somewhere to put it. For the mana base of this deck, we're just running 37 Islands, just because it keeps the, the budget down. I would recommend if you spend any more money on this deck, get an old board of Mystic Sanctuary, maybe get a strip mine if you've got the money for it. There is all these cards you can definitely do to improve the deck. A Cephalid Coliseum would also probably go a long way. So that's the board strikes of the deck. It's a budget deck, but it gets to maintain a cool aesthetic theme, and it's not a full time capsule, because obviously you've got some of these old border shifted cards, but a lot of the time, besides your commander, you're going to be playing cards that are all from this much older era of magic, and it's got a really strong aesthetic identity and mechanical identity because of that. So yeah, I, I would really recommend giving it a whirl, and again, it's, it's about as cheap as you're going to get for an old border deck that is quite functional, and allows you to play at the table, interact with your opponents, and actually have a chance of winning. And yeah, that's my deck tech. If there's any cards you think I've missed, it would be great upgrades. Throw that stuff down in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day and thanks for watching.